We are looking at the Grade 12 Information Technology Paper 1, the PRAC paper for the Exemplar 2018. And we're looking at Section C, which is the OOP question, the question with object-oriented programming. So for Question 3, we've been given an incomplete object. They've done parts of it for us. Um, an incomplete program which we're going to be using. So we're going to be using this for the second part of this question. The first part will be just dealing with the creating or the editing of the object and making it work. So let's do 3.1. They've provided you with a incomplete object of top T player. And if I go to the program, I've already added it. There it is. So there you can see it. So They've already done all the hard lifting for us. They've created some private fields for us. They've done the declaration. They've even added the users here, which is quite nifty because they've added sysutils and dateutils, which are probably things that we're going to need to use. Um, and they've done a constructor and a two string for us already. So there we go. And it looks like we're probably going to have to do some, some stuff over here. So let's have a look at what they want us to do. So they've given us <clears throat> an email which uniquely identifies the player, there's a name, there's a date of birth, and there's an approved flag which determines if their registration is approved or not. And so there we go. So let's go. 3.1.1. We must create an accessor method, a method that accesses the email called get email that just returns, I assume, the, the f email attribute. So that would be a function. So we are going to create a function over here. We'll make it, do they say they must be private or not? They just say, so we normally make our functions public. So I'm gonna say function and call get email. That's what they want it to be. There's no information that's needed. It's simply going to return the email field, which as you can see is a string. So it's gonna return a string and control shift C. He has the code for it, result, and we are, ooh, result, spell it properly, Mr. Long, equals to the F email field. So we're just going to send back whatever this field is. We're going to send it back. So that's the first one. Ooh, that seemed quite easy. Oh, it's only for two marks, that's why. <laughs> okay, so that's an accessor. Now we must create a mutator method. This is a procedure which is going to change one of our fields and set approved to receive a Boolean value. So it takes in a parameter, a Boolean, and assigns that value to the approved field. So let's go to our code. We're going to, that's going to be a procedure and it's called set approved. And that's going to take in a parameter, a Boolean parameter. I'm going to call it a uh, B check or call whatever you want, and that's going to be of type boolean, and it doesn't return anything. And we're going to control shift C, and all we're going to do is we're going to take that boolean value and put it into the approved field. We already have an approved field of type boolean, and that's going to be assigned the value of our parameter. So that's going to be equal to whatever the B check is. So if we send back a true, we will set it to true. If we send back to false, we will send it to false. So there we go. So there we are on the right track. Now, they said write a private method. So this must be private called test email. That can be used to test if an email is good or not. Okay. It must receive the email address as a parameter. So we must give it an email address. And it will return a Boolean value if it follows the test or based on the following test. So it returns something. So that tells you it's a function. Uh, the address may only start with a letter from the alphabet, upper or lower case, and with no other digit or character. Okay, so just the first letter. Okay, that's quite a weird question, but let's do it. So we're going to create a private. So let's go up here. We're not going to make it public. We're going to do a private one, a private function called test email. And it takes in an email as a parameter. So we must give it an email address. So email of type string and it's going to return a boolean value a true or false so it's going to return a boolean okay control so that's under private so only this uh, unit can access that particular function so they want us so we're going to take in that email and we're going to determine if um it if the first letter is a valid character hmm Okay, so well, let's go. 
So to get the first character, you can go email square bracket one. That'll give me the first character. Um, so I'm going to check if it's a normal character. So I'm going to say if it's in the set. If you've forgotten sets, you can do something like that. So we can go from A dot dot to Z. And that will check if it's any, if that first character is any one of the, or anywhere in the set from A to Z. It recognizes that that's a set of letters. Um, but we also need to create a capital letter. So either we could make that lower case of email one, or we could add to the set, well, any letter from A to Z or from A to Z on the the upper side, the uppercase side. So if that is in that set, that whole thing will be a true. So if that is true, if that first character is in that set, then our result will be true. But you always, with a Boolean function, need to make sure you cover both cases. So we need to have the else um, our result equals false. Okay. So there we go. We can see that the email, the first letter, is in the set from A to Z. Or, as I said, you can either put lowercase around that email the first character and then just have that part in the set. You could use things like that if you wanted to, and that should work for our scenario. Looks okay. Again, we can't test anything because we're still developing our, our object. So we've done our test email, now 3.1.4 change the constructor that we've got and we need to use this test email that's why it was private we could have used the constructor in order to test if the email is valid if the email is okay then we just set it to the email address that was given as an attribute but if it's not then we must change the email attribute to the word error mm, okay so let's go see so we're going to go to our constructor there's our constructor constructor is a name and email date of birth and at the moment, it doesn't allocate anything to the email field. You see that? That email field gets nothing. So what we're going to do, you can do all of those things. We're going to first check if that email is okay. So we're going to test email. You see how we call in our function that we created. And we're going to use the email that we received as a parameter. We're going to say, hey, does this email that we got given, let's just, just test it to see if it's the first letter is a, is a character, because that's very important to us. If that equals to true, in other words, that email works out, then I can set my email field to that email parameter, because I'm happy with it. It passed my test. But if it didn't, else, then my email field must be equal to the word error because obviously something was wrong with it just the word error so there we go i think that's all we have to do for that so so if it if we get that email before we put it into our email field we just want to test it if it passes yeah just do it you actually don't even need to put that part in it's just if test email is true well the whole thing will be true okay so that's great so let's go to the next bit and the last bit of our creating our object we must write a public test age method that will receive the minimum age requirement for registration as a parameter so it's receiving some sort of number an age so it will be some sort of integer as a parameter and determine whether the player is old enough to be registered the player's age must be calculated using today's date and the player's date of birth and if the player's age meets the minimum requirement then the word approved must be returned if it's too young then or if he's too young, then just, or he or she is too young, then just say rejected. Okay, so public test age. So this is returning a string. You see it's returning a string as a function. It takes in some sort of integer. So let's declare it first. So I'm going to have another function. Put in the fun back in function called test age. Test age, and we're going to give it an integer. So I'm going to give it uh, age as a variable an integer variable to test and it's going to spit out a string or return a string control shift c let's write the code okay so we're going to get given this age okay i first need to work out my player's current age so that's the age that i'm testing um i'm going to make a variable called um my player's age whoever the player is let's call it our player age okay now i need to try to work out the 
age. How would we do that? Well, we've got their date of birth in a field. Let's just double check their date of birth, but it's a string. And oh, this is a big hint here. They've given us date utils, so I can use all the date utils functions. So let's use them. Ah, okay, so let's try. Now, if you're, if you're not sure how to use the date utils functions or what is available, you can always just type in date utils dot and you can get a whole list of all of them there so you can go check it out or you can go to the help but if the help's deactivated just go data tools to, uh, dot and you can see all these functions okay so we've got tons of functions that are available to us and i've got a there's a, a years in a row weeks in a row i think there is a year function years between maybe oh years between there we go so we do the now date and the then date and we will return a number which i would soon be the years between so let's do that so i'm going to say the player's age our player age oh spelling wrong there is equal to years between there we go and we want now so today's date would be date if i remember remember we use date so that would be today's date and then we need to put in the date of the birth date of birth what was the field called date of birth okay go down. date of birth there we go um, but the problem is this needs a date a date time type of, of variable but that's a string but there is a function just like into string and string to end we've got a this is a string, so we want to convert it from what it is to what we want it to become. We want to convert it to a date. So it recognizes it as a date, puts it in with the date function, and it will return the difference. So that will tell me the age of the player. So that's just working out the age. Now that I know the age, I must check if this player's age... Oh, doesn't make a difference, but I like to make it look a bit better. If this player's age is greater than equal to the age that we've given as a parameter. So if they give 18, if we equal to 18 or more, then we are okay. Then we can send back a result of the word approved. I think it's the word approved, eh? Approved, there we go. In capitals. But if it's not approved... Then we must send back the word rejected. Oh, shame. This person's going to get rejected, maybe. Okay. Obviously, because we're only doing one thing for the if statement, we don't need begins and ends. So there we go. So if we work out the player's age, if it meets that criteria, we can send back approved. If it doesn't, we send back rejected. Okay. So we've done all the stuff for our object. Or I should have done them there, maybe, but that's fine. So I've done all my fields or all my um, functions and that. Um, now we are going to go to 3.2 and see how we're going to use all those functions. And we'll do that in the next video. Speaking of the next video, if you want to find that as well as other videos in the series, as well as other videos in Delphi, go to our YouTube channel. Just click on playlist and you can see a whole range of topics there, particularly revolving around Delphi. Like us on Facebook, like us on, follow us on Twitter. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.